Welcome back to Press Review. Let's start by taking a look at today's front pages in the Middle East. Saudi Arabia's Arab News leads today reporting that the Labour Ministry has offered seven solutions for companies that have successfully fulfilled the Saudization conditions to be able to hire more foreign workers. The paper also reports on Crown Prince Salman, the Deputy Premier and Minister of Defence, will embark on a three-day national tour of Pakistan, Japan and India later this month. And the front page on UAE's Khalish Times reports that despite a three-year freeze on hikes, residential rents recorded steep increases in the Emirate of Sharjah in 2013, in line with a general upswing felt across the resurgent UAE leasing market. The paper also reports on Syria vowing to stay committed to destroying all its chemical weapons despite the difficulties caused by its conflict. And from Israel, the Jerusalem Post leads today reporting Finance Minister Yair Lapid will back down from his Yeshatid party's threat to quit the coalition if criminal sanctions for Haredi draft dodgers are not legislated. The paper also reports that the Supreme Court is sent to deny an appeal by Beit Shemesh Mayor Moshe Abutbul, who asked the court to overrule a Jerusalem district court decision calling for re-elections in the city. Iran's Tehran Times sees this paper today reporting that Japan this week became the first of Iran's oil buyers to make a payment for crude imports under an interim nuclear deal as the West East sanctions against the Iranian economy. The paper also reports on President Hassan Rouhani saying that a promotion of relations with Muslim countries, including the neighboring uh, states, is a high priority for Iran and that the King of Bahrain has approved a law imposing a jail sentence of up to seven years and a fine of thousands of dollars for anyone who publicly insults him. Now let's have a look at the papers in the UK. Starting with the UK's Guardian, which leads uh, today reporting that more than 200 prominent international authors, including Gunter Grass, Salman Rushdie and Margaret Atwood, have joined forces to denounce the chokehold they say Russia's anti-gay and blasphemy laws place on the freedom of expression. The paper also reports on a 17-year-old student uh, urging Education Secretary Michael Gove to help end female gen genital mutilation in Britain by asking head teachers to train and inform teachers and parents about the horror of the practice. And the Times leads reporting that the first prosecution for female genital mutilation is expected to go ahead within weeks after a concerted uh, drive to end Britain's shameful record over the crime. The paper also reports on the battering of Britain continuing as storms continue to sweep across southern parts of the country. And the Daily Telegraph leads today with a picture of uh, Bigfoot Smith Institute in Cornwall as the paper reports that heavy rain and gale force winds are to continue to battle large waves of the south of Britain, leaving many areas at risk of further flooding. The paper also reports that a leading economic think tank has warned that forcing Britain's highest earners to foot a greater share of the nation's tax bill is putting the government's long-term finances at risk. And last from the UK, The Independent leads today reporting that the school's minister David Laws has called for Ofsted to be given greater powers to investigate the performance of the Conservatives Academy schools, opening a new rift with Education Secretary Michael Gove. It also features a picture of Russian soldiers as they welcome the teams of Italy and the Netherlands ahead of the 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi. And now to the top stories in international papers. Starting with the Moscow Times, which focuses its front page on Sochi today, reporting that as the Olympic torch arrives in the city and as President Putin resides, presides over the raising of the Russian flag in the Olympic village, problems continue with the construction of the Olympic facilities still not complete. The paper also reports on activists fighting in Sochi to save stray dogs from being killed after reading on a social networking site that local authorities have hired a company to shoot all street dogs and cats ahead of the Winter Olympics. 
And the International New York Times leads today reporting on Ukraine's president losing support in stronghold areas as two businessmen remove advertising videos featuring glamorous models from a large outdoor screen and replace them with a live broadcast of uh, Russia's anti-government protests at Independence Square in Kiev. The paper also reports on a United Nations report calling on the Vatican to remove all child abusers from its ranks, report them to law enforcement and open the church's archives so that bishops and other officials who concealed crimes could be held accountable. And China Daily's front page leads reporting that President Xi Jinping is scheduled uh, to leave Beijing to attend the opening ceremony of the Winter Olympics in Sochi. The paper also reports that on snowstorms and rain in many regions of the country disrupting travelers. And for more updates, visit us on levant.tv. Thanks for watching. I'll be with you tomorrow for another press review.